news you can use. Today's news you can use is going to be an article that came out in Reuters this morning. And uh, the title of the article is Selling Out America's Local Landlords Moving In Big Investors. And it talks about the fact that, you know, many of the landlords across the country have not gotten payments for as much as 18 months, uh, in some cases, even longer. Um, and even with the eviction moratorium being suspended, and then we talked about last week, uh, immediately the CDC came in and tried to throw up another roadblock, and that's before the court right now. Uh, the the uh, D.C. court, the district court, federal district court. So they have not made a ruling on that. We talked about that at last Thursday night's article, and you can find that on the Facebook page if you want to see what the latest is in the background on that. But with that still up in the air, uh, what we are seeing and what Reuters uh, has pointed out in today's article is there is a huge number of landlords that are basically just throwing up their hands and saying, you know what, we're just not doing this anymore. We're going to sell our properties with or without tenants. In a lot of cases, you know, they've been able to, in some states, get tenants out uh, because contracts have expired or safety issues, things like that. But, um, you know, a lot of these landlords are just saying, I've had enough. It's just been too hard of a run for these guys. And so they're just selling off their properties. Well, what's happening is a lot of these large companies think Homes of America and folks like that that are in the long-term rental housing business are using this as an opportunity to go in and scoop up large swaths of homes. And the article, if you can get your hands on this article from Reuters today, talks about uh, two boyhood, boyhood friends, Michael Morano and Richard Tyson. And these guys are in Rochester, New York. They owned 96 rental units. And they, in particular, they offered accommodation to low-end tenants, many in the service industry, for moving houses to single-family starter houses. Um, they had a, a booming portfolio. They had a, a really nice portfolio. They bought their houses at the right price at the right time. And they were making some money. This was their primary source of income. Then COVID hit, and then the eviction moratorium, and then later on the uh, foreclosure moratorium uh, came in. And these guys, you know, they were down to their last pennies. I mean, they, they had kind of run these guys out of, uh, out of money uh, with all of this government intervention here. And so they finally, somebody had approached them uh, to buy big chunks of their properties. And their first one was they sold 15 of their single family homes to just one big out of state investor. Um, and it's not just the largest corporations who were buying these things, there was also um, you know, people like those of you out there who are in this business buying these types of properties as well, but they're down to basically less than a third of the properties they had to begin with. They've sold all the rest off. And so you're seeing that happen. And one of the biggest problems that we've got is the government passed a $46 billion bill. And I've talked about this um, a month or two ago on some of these calls. They passed a, a relief bill for landlords of $46 billion. And this money was supposed to go to the landlords who weren't getting paid by the tenants. But Congress made basically one rule and it said that they're going to give the money to the states and the cities and counties, but they have to have a mechanism to distribute it. And they can put their own rules that are that match up with what their local rules are, for example, fair housing and things like that. Um, only th still only 3 billion of the 46 billion has been distributed. And most of the biggest problem, my understanding, is that only about five states have been able to put together any type of criteria to distribute that money. And 45 have just thrown up their hands and said, we, we don't have the money anymore because we didn't get income because of COVID and people being out of work. We don't have the income to build this new department to distribute this money. So it's sitting in state, city, and county coffers being unspent. Now, five states, including California, uh, of course, we've got you know more money than we know what to do with, I guess, out here at the state level. Um, and I'm just saying that tongue in cheek. I, I don't know where they come up with the money, but you know, we were given a big chunk of it and we put, as usual, a bunch of stupid rules on it for a landlord to take the money. For example, 
uh, initially you would only get 80% of what you were owed and you had to sign a deal with the government, with the state of government saying you would keep your price at or below the current rent price and you would do a bunch of other things. Basically, you'd make the state your partner on the house. And so the vast majority of landlords said, pound sand, we don't want your money. And so they can't force us to take the money. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons besides the fact that you've got most of these states have not, do not have a system to even distribute that money. So the landlords have not really gotten any relief. Uh, that, that's the bottom line. There's just been no relief on hand for these landlords, even though there's this money earmark, it's sitting there. My understanding also is in some of these states, the money has been uh, used for other things, you know, the, the way that they play games with their budgets and they juggle their balance sheet. It has allowed these folks to, uh, in some of these states, to use that money for other purposes. So it's a giant cluster out there and landlords are the ones holding the bag. Um, you know, the Supreme Court has said uh, in their majority opinion here a couple of months ago that this is basically unfair to landlords, unconstitutional, so on and so forth. And, you know, I, there's no doubt in my mind that down the road, the Supreme Court's rulings will prevail and that there'll be some relief from landlords. But I fear that the only relief we're going to see is that they have the ability to evict the tenant, not get their money. So what, do, what does a landlord do if you haven't been paid in 18 months and you're still making the payment, the underlying payment to Bank of America? You have to sell out. And so there is a great opportunity for all you guys. Now, these large, giant, multi-billion dollar uh, holding, you know, Red Brick and Homes for America and those guys, uh, they're the ones doing the majority of the buying from these landlords. But you know, you have the opportunity to talk to these landlords who want to sell and say, listen, you can sell to some large multi-global national uh, type business, or, you know, you can work with us and we'll keep it a, a local product. You know, we'll be able to come in and, and do some things. And so there's some great opportunities out there for you guys. Um, and also an opportunity, you know, that these large corporations are not paying top dollar for these houses either. They're paying an adjusted, um, a bifurcated price that they think the market will result in over the next year or two where the market will be. And so, uh, and then discounted for there for the time value of money and so on and so forth. So you have the ability to go in and tell these people, listen, I can get you more money if you can wait on some or all of uh, your equity. And that's a golden uh, pitch to give to these guys because they've already been waiting on their equity. So what's the deal if they shift their headache from themselves to you and you can turn around and pay them over a period of time using seller finance or subject to and seller carry back combination. Um, and you can get your properties uh, in a lot of cases for almost nothing down. Um, now you're absorbing their problem. You're taking on their problem, but that's also an opportunity. If uh, And I've talked about this ad nauseum this entire year, even into last year, if you buy a house that has a holdover tenant, make sure you get the rights to collect that holdover tenant rent that has not been paid. So make sure you put that in your contract that you can collect that rent should it become available down the road. Most of the time these landlords are gonna say they're never gonna get paid. In most cases, you probably will not, but if there is an opportunity, if there is some kind of a government bailout down the road, if they do figure out how to properly distribute this $46 billion to landlords, you want to be able to get the right to collect the last 18 months worth of payments if you buy that house and take on their problem. So that's where the opportunity lies for all of you. Um, I would definitely focus on landlords who have tenants or had tenants and are just tired and want to sell. And I've seen this happen my entire 20 plus year career where landlords just get tired of the deal. And, you know, all they got to do is go through a couple of evictions or one eviction and they wave the white flag and say, I'm done. You know, I just want out of this headache. And so, you know, um, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. And so in a lot of cases, you'll have a chance to, to take their garbage off their hands for them at a, at a decent price and with terms. And you can turn that into a long-term money-making opportunity for yourself. So that's where I would encourage everybody to focus. 
and work. Um, you know, I would, uh, as, as I've cautioned for the last month or two, I would really tone down your work in the wholesale and especially the rehab side. Um, Subtail is a good market as well right now, and you can do that. If you have a, a particular inkling to want to go in and do some work on a house, do it on a subtail basis where you're not having to buy the house for cash. So that's where I predict your opportunities are. That's where I would encourage all of you guys to focus and spend your time, effort, energy, and money on. And there is a good opportunity out there for you guys to make a lot of money. With that said, that's news you can use for today. Let's